if you look at the definition of what constitutes a utility uh, in the act that we're talking about, uh, it's any company that sells electricity to a third party. All you have to do to that law is to put semicolon after that definition and say excluding solar generated electricity. You don't have to do like the editorial in today's paper, overturn the law. You don't have to overturn the law. You just have to make an exception for solar generated electricity. That's one point. The second is something that I don't think most people know about. And that is that if you have a if you have, have a solar panel, if you produce a lot of solar energy in your house, you have the right to sell that energy to any other property that is directly adjacent. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that means that the kind of uh, uh, purchase agreements, power purchase agreements that people have been talking about, if somebody puts a solar array on your property, it's not crossing property lines. It's not, it's not going beyond the property. And that alone should give you the right to just say, we're going to do it. Because the, uh, the uh, word I'm searching for, the, uh, see what happens if you get a lot of them. Uh, I know, they, they, no, you, you've, all, you've already established a precedent. That's the word I was looking for. You've already established a precedent in the law that allows you to sell electricity to any property that is directly adjacent. In fact, if you were a developer, and you know how they like to do curved uh, streets in the development, you could put your little power source here. You could chop off little bits and pieces of the way in which the property fits around it, and you could sell it to all of those people, and that would be within the existing law. And I don't think people have really looked at that as the, uh, the precedent that has been established, and therefore automatically weakens Georgia Power's argument. But as I say, if you just put in a phrase that excludes solar generated electricity from being defined as a utility, then that you don't have to overturn the law or make a lot of other changes in the law in order to make that happen. Now, I, I do the same analysis that you did, only not as sophisticated. I, uh, my background is a business journalist, so I, I read annual reports, and I read Georgia Power's annual report. And I saw what they were saying, and it was all a bunch of hoo. And uh, in fact, I blogged on this last January. So that the there is no question that solar power becomes more and more feasible with every passing year. And that at a certain point, and you you reach that point, it is competitive with anything else that's out there if you compare apples to apples. And of course, I didn't go as far as you've gone, which is to say, what does all that free electricity after the initial purchase agreement, whether it's 20 years or 25 years, we know that, that these panels are going to be going for 30 years, some 35 years, you're right, some 40 years, and that's going to be free power. And only the cost of operation and maintenance is going to be involved. It's going to be such a low rate. I hadn't, come, I hadn't taken that and built it back in because very few people are going to have a house for 40 years. But everything you're saying makes a great deal of sense, and uh, certainly the spreadsheets demonstrate that. But I think the least amount of tinkering we can do with the act, the uh, the easier it is to walk it through the legislature. We agree with that. The way you understand the laws is the way we understand it. Do you have 